This is a technical video on SonicWall botnet filtering. In this video, we will go through first what is a botnet network, how the communication works in a botnet network, and what we can do to prevent botnet filtering with the firewall. And then we actually simply go through the UI and actually make it work. Hi, I'm Jean-Pierre Talbot, SC for SonicWall in Canada, helping customer and reseller get the most out of their network security solutions. If you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. And all the link to the content I'll mention will be in the description box down below. So let's get started. So what is a botnet network? I'm not going to go deep into details. I'm just going to stay very high level. So botnet network as it, the name mentioned, it's a network, so you do have multiple machines. It could be your PC or your kid's PC, mom's PC. So it has <clears throat> a small agent on it, a small piece of malware. And that small piece of malware is reporting to what we call a botnet command and control. And that command and control is the one that decide what the thousand, hundreds of thousands of botnet PCs or call zombies will actually do. So usually your PC will just work perfectly fine with that small little agent because of course they don't want you to see like hey my PC is very dead slow there is something wrong and then you call IT and they start to investigate what's wrong with your PC and try different piece of different software different type of antivirus to actually detect them so they want to you they want your PC to keep working perfectly and being totally unnoticed and botnet is actually a business. I mean, you can actually rent a network of botnet and you do usually have different packages you can use. Yeah, and I, I've never done it, but I assume you need to go through uh, the dark web to actually subscribe to those type of service. So you could say, hey, um, I need 100,000 machines and I want them to attack this website or I want them to do crypto mining when the PC is not being used or I wanted to collect personal information or like credit card numbers or passwords for different websites, you know, you can really kind of pay the package you want. And they also have support. So you can say, hey, um, I've asked for 100,000 machine to collect credit card information. And in the last month, I only got 12 credit card and support to be like, oh, yeah, that's really unusual. I'm sorry for that. And they will, I guess, find a way to fix it. So and the way that communication works is your PC, which we'll call, let's say, a zombie PC, is actually sending communication out to that botnet network. Because I'm sure you know firewall usually don't allow traffic in unless you create a policy to say, yes, it allow this traffic in and do a static NAT to send it inside. So usually we won't do policies for this. Most of the time, traffic are wide open fully allowed to go out. So the way it works is the zombie PC will send a communication out usually in a very standard uh, fashion, very standard protocol, like they could use DNS protocol or HTTP protocol and just uh, send traffic that appear like a web request. And that request goes out and it's pretty much the botnet machine, the zombie PC calling out and say, hey, um, I'm here, do you need me to do something? And that goes out, let's say, as a web request. So that command and control for the botnet will issue a reply back just using standard web traffic, HTTP traffic, and say, yes, please, I would like you to start collecting credit card information. And of course, then it will start sending out credit card information through HTTP, which could look very benign to the firewall or any security appliance because when you shop stuff on eBay or any website, you do input your credit card information and that traffic goes out. So... If, they, if they'd done their job well and coded their piece of malware, their uh, botnet thing, if they coded correctly, the traffic will kind of go out just like standard traffic and trying to appear totally unseen. And that is if they've done it well. I mean, I'm sure you guys have seen plenty of malware or bad stuff being done very poorly. Just an example, this morning, I got a message, a text message from someone asking me, say, hey, yeah, you need to click here on this link because of your bank something. I'm like, okay, first, congrats for sending it in French because you have you know I'm in Quebec, so I may speak French, so kudos on this. But just an FYI, uh, in North America, phone numbers are not 11 digits, they're 10 digits. So, I, and, you know, nice try. So what we will do with the sonic wall, the botnet filter, what it can do is actually block any communication in or out to command and control centers. So that means if you have a machine internally that's trying to communicate to the command and control and say, hey, 
do you need me to do something? Then the firewall will actually see that traffic, will see the destination IP, and we do own and maintain a database of IPs that we know are command and control for botnet. So then we can block that communication and of course log it and alarms and send you emails to make sure that you go fix that machine because there is obviously something going on on this machine. It's trying to communicate to different botnet networks. And it will also block inbound communication. So if the botnet network start trying to do some port scan and trying to find if remote desktop is open or if DNS is open or any protocol that they may want to try to get in, remote desktop being the most obvious one. So the firewall will also see, well, you're an IP of a botnet network. So no, sorry, I'm not going to allow remote desktop from you because, well, you have a botnet, you are part of my botnet database for command and control. So I don't allow anything coming in from you, even though I would usually allow it. So that being said, it is now time to set it up. So here I do have a DZ670 and of course I'm connected to the firewall and we do have internet access. The firewall right now is uh, factory default and all I've done is put licensing in it. So what we need to do to turn on botnet filter, we go into policy, security services and botnet filter. So pretty straightforward. You need to turn that on. So you select on. So you turn on blockage of everything coming and going to and from a botnet command and control. So remember that command and control, that server that leads a bunch of different botnet zombie machines. So we will block everything coming to them or from them. And here you can select what you want to do. Do you want to block absolutely everything, no matter what the policies are, just block it, or you want to apply blockage based on uh, firewall policies. So I'll show you both, but personally, my own suggestion is turn it block, you know, block for absolutely everything, no matter what direction it is, no matter what policy it is, everything coming and going to and from botnet command control will be blocked. That's how I personally do it. Um, then here we do have two other database we can use. You know, there is the built-in one from SonicWall and here is the, there is the, uh, a custom list you can build. And then I'm sure you can see here custom botnet list. So that is a list where you can input IP addresses of what you consider being a botnet uh, command and control IP. So we do have it here. You can turn it on if you want. We'll turn it on just for uh, testing because I want to, I'll put 8.8.8.8 into the custom botnet list and you'll see what happened and what get logs and everything. Um, then you do have a dynamic botnet, botnet list. So see here, you can go here and input a botnet IP address and you do have information and uh, here, you do have information here on the specific format that the file need to be, uh, that the, the, the IP address need to be input. So if you do have any third party source of botnet uh, that IPs, um, sometimes I've seen government issue a server where you can download a list of what they believe are IPs that should be blocked that are botnet, then you know you could use this uh, if you want, right? But you don't have to. There is a built-in one in SonicWall. So what I would do by default for everyone, my personal recommendation, turn it on for all connection. Of course, log it. It's always annoying when the firewall blocks something and doesn't tell you, right? So blockage, log it. And here you could have exceptions, which we will not do today. So we can just hit accept. Oh, I forgot also. I'll turn on the, bot, the, the custom one, but just for demo purposes, right? Don't do what I'm about to do in your environment. That would cause you, of course, issues. So for me, I will, for demo purposes, I will turn on the custom. Uh, botnet list and I will go into the custom botnet list and add a custom address. So we'll create a new address object. I'll call it botnet test botnet demo. I decided so it's an IP on the one it's a host and I want it to be this IP address. And I'll turn it on for botnet and I'll call it test and save. Then you have the dynamic list. So, you know, if you've set a server to import, 
a bunch of IP addresses that are botnet, then of course the list would show up here. And here you do have a web uh, blog page, so you can decide to turn it on or off and do hit preview. So you see if you're trying to access a website uh, through HTTP or HTTPS, and it will give you that deny message. And here you do have diagnostics. So of course you can see, um, you know, different information about what have been blocked, what have been denied and so forth. So let's just try botnet uh, filters. As you remember here, I did turn on the custom one, which I would not recommend generally. Generally, you just turn on this one and this one and don't play with the but the custom one unless, of course, you want to import custom IPs in there. And I've put uh, Google uh, 8.8.8.8 as a custom botnet address just for demo purposes. So let's try to ping 8.8.8. And as you can see, my ping doesn't work. And next we will go see live logs. And see here we do have a an entry in the logs telling me uh, this has been blocked because it is into the botnet uh, filter. So pretty straightforward. Let me go back in here and turn off the custom one. So I just leave it as it should be, just block using the SonicWall database and log it. And I will remove it from the custom list as well. And now, as you can see, my ping works. Next, remember here, we do have uh, allow to block for all connections or for firewall uh, base connection. So here I can, I will switch it to this and actually I'll put back my custom uh, blockage, the custom list, so accept, and again, purely for demo purposes. So as you can see, my ping still work because I need to turn on botnet filtering per access rule. See here, it's at the beginning it was all connection, so it was anything regardless of access rule. And now I switch it just based on access rule. So then I would need to go into my access rules and select which policy I do want botnet filtered to be applied. So see here, as, as I mentioned, that firewall is factory default. So I just have the basic policy that allow everything out. And I don't like it because it, it allows anything. Um, that's something I would suggest you openly open the ports you want. Uh, I've done a video on, you know, my personal tips and tricks. So I would suggest you have a look. Um, but here, if you go into security profile, see, you can turn on botnet uh, per policy. And I do like the new way that SonicWall is have made that interface. See, you have a show diagram, you can click it. Then you can say, you know, dock it to the policy. And see here, you can see uh, one nice view that tells you everything about your policy. It's allowed. Here is the features that are turned on. Here is the login on. Here is the different optimal, uh, optional settings that are on. So here I can just say turn on uh, botnet protection. And of course, here we see it is checked as well. So if I hit save, now I've turned on botnet protection on my outgoing policy and my ping will not work anymore. So that could be useful. Maybe you want to only apply botnet filtering for inbound email in the case you still have a exchange server on-prem or, you know, anything you host. But, you know, quite frankly, um, I personally always turn it on for all connection, right? So here I show you again. So going to policies, botnet filter, and I just turn it on this way, like this. So turn it, turn botnet filtering on all connections. I don't use custom botnet lists or dynamic botnet lists coming from third party. And I turn on login. So pretty straightforward policy and service to turn on. You have two checkbox to hit, right? Turn it on, turn on login and save. And that's it. So, so I really like how easy this thing is to set versus what it brings you as well, right? Super easy to set. Two checkbox, you hit accept, 
you're done and you get a great value because then you can go into monitor and you can see those botnet it will actually log it so then you can see well maybe i should go check this machine because it called out on an ip that is considered a botnet so go check that machine there is obviously something going on and uh, also you if you want you can get uh, email alerts right so if you go into um i think it's in monitor no it is in device log settings you go into security services and then you have botnet so see here you can decide what you want as a log in the graphical interface you can get alert syslog and you can also set email so you could if you want receive an email if a machine is set to um, if a machine have trying to communicate to a botnet outside so i really see this feature as preventing your inside machine calling out to command and control and eventually perform unwanted action like uh, send corporate information out or passwords or credit card information or crypto mining or anything. So you don't want your internal machines and your network to send information out. So botnet filter to me is a great way to first block it and second to also identify which machine have issues. So thanks for watching. I really hope you appreciated that video and uh, well, see you in the next one. Thanks.